Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wasnick Adventure. We are on the air. I love it. We get so many uh, emails and people on Facebook messaging us and and contacting us through our internet site, and we bump into people here and there, and they just really love the show. And I know the reason why is because we have a very gritty show. We have real people talking about real life and uh, getting down into um, you know what what really makes what what their story is and their their history, their personal history with the Lord. Uh, and today we're going to have as our guest here in a couple minutes, Grady Dyke. He is uh, a cast member of Long Ride Home, uh, our TV series, which is airing every Tuesday night at 11 p.m. on EWTN. And very soon we're hopeful it'll be up on iTunes, Amazon Prime, and all those other types of social, all those other types of digital platforms. So we're excited about that. And I uh, want to uh, say we normally, our show is recorded in time, I think, for Father's Day this weekend, so we want to say Happy Father's Day to everybody. And uh, you can go to our website, deepadventure.com. We've got all kinds of gear for the men. We've got the new Paracord Warrior Rosary by Tom Sullivan there. We have my books, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue, and Deep in the Way of a Surfing Guide to the Soul. But the best thing you could do is, is uh, get for someone you love the uh, 10 DVD set of our re reality TV show, Long Ride Home, on EWTN. And the major star of that show, according to him, is our guest today, Grady Dyke. Aloha, Grady. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Hello, hello, Bear. Yeah, you didn't know, right? When we when you bumped into us, when we you decided you were going to uh, ride with us to the Big Bend, you really had no idea what you were getting yourself into, did you? I had no clue. All I was all I was looking for was a ride to the Big Bend with some some Catholic men. Had no idea this was going to lead to. Uh, to this whole this whole TV career, <laughs> you, you know the, <laughs> the thing about it is, uh, my image of that first season is we're going to go out into the desert, and we're going to get up in the mountains, we're going to have a lot of time to pray and have solitude, and and the reality of it is, uh, it was it's 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 tough, isn't it? Be, you know, doing this show, being a cast member of the show, is one of the toughest things someone could do. I think it is. It's hard work, and and I didn't. Uh, I didn't see it coming, but uh, it's good work. It's yeah. good work. You, you know, when I was on uh, uh, Hawaii Five O, uh, they had a woman uh, standing there fanning me, and another person had an umbrella over me. <laughs> I, I, I didn't get that. Why didn't I have that? <laughs> As I recall, one of the episodes, you did get the mud wrap at the spa. I, I did. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and people don't know this, but uh, season two. We're deep into editing season two, getting it ready for EWTN. Hopefully it'll be out before the year is over. There's so much work involved when you do a reality show. There's so much data, you know, just terabytes of data from the GoPros and from the audio and everything else like that. And But we're deep into it now. And, Grady, you're looking more and more like this, the main star of the show, I have to say. <laughs> that scares me. And, you know, we have uh, some of the other cast members, uh, Jay Flunker, who we just love. Uh, what's his nickname on the show? Iron Man. And why is that? Do you remember? Because he's an Iron Man. Yeah, he runs the Iron Man. He proved yeah. it to us. Remember what he did that day when his motorcycle broke down? Yeah, he rode like a thousand miles or something. <laughs> <laughs> he had I, I, remember, I remember him laying on the blacktop on his back. That was. Yeah, we got a pit. We got a picture of it. We weren't with it. We abandoned him in the desert with him and just the iguanas or something. <laughs> yeah, he had to go back after riding 60 miles. He had to go back to Houston, get a new bike, and then, and then come up and meet us on the on the longest ride of our of of the of the se of that season. And he was a new biker, and dude, he made it. I think he rode 650 miles or something that day. He yeah. He, he got there late at night. It was dark when he got there. Yeah, and it's so cool. Is like. You know, it must be really hard for him, I I'm thinking, Grady, because Jay is always having to tell people my that I am an Iron Man. He, 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 he works it into the first one minute of every, buddy's, <laughs> you know, every conversation, right? right? So, so have you heard his latest, his latest thing to try to avoid having to do that? No. He got a license plate now that just says Iron Man on it, so it saves him a lot of hassle <laughs> having, <laughs> to bra having to tell people all the time that he is, you know, so. You know, I live right here in the same town, but I haven't seen him or, or Father Mark. I haven't seen either of those guys. Well, they're busy. They're busy. 
Yeah. And Grady, Grady lives in Houston, and the thing we love about Grady is it was like a Holy Spirit-inspired moment because I don't know, Grady, what you meant to us. When you showed up, first of all, it was like reinforcements coming in. We were exhausted. I know we'd only ridden halfway across the United States, but doing a reality TV show and pushing long into the night riding, uh, and, then, and then here came this just solid, gritty guy showed up somewhere, I think, at the board of Louisiana and Texas. It was raining, remember? Oh, yeah. And then we went the very first meeting Grady and then right into the, the thunderstorm. But, um, but on that ride, uh, Grady, you, you really did a lot for us. You really became the, uh, the tail gunner that you rode sweep for us. You protected us. Tell people what it means to ride sweep, what your role is back there on the back of the pack and how significant it is. Well, I'm, I'm doing several things back there, but mainly I'm looking out – uh, for the pack, watching everybody, seeing, uh, you know, well, a good example, uh, remember Daniel, Daniel, uh, Cowboy Daniel, he had that little problem with the dehydration, you know, and, and the tail gunner can, can see those kind of things. Now, actually, it wasn't me that day, but that's one of the things you're watching out for people, make sure that nothing's uh, loose on their bike, about to fall off. Or Yeah, you saw that with Jay Flunker's bike, right? It's exactly. Jay's wheel, back wheel starts wobbling. You're keeping an eye on the guys in front of you, and then, and then when you're changing lanes, you know you, you swing over to kind of block the traffic to, so that everybody can get over and from lane to lane, those types of things. Well, descri describe that one technique is when you're in 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 freeway traffic, especially. Well, describe that technique of how a pack should ride together and how you make that lane switch. The the bigger the pack, obviously, the more difficult it is to change lanes, especially when you're in traffic. So if, if you got a good tail gunner, uh, when, when, the, when the road captain signals that he wants to get over one lane or the other, then the tail gunner picks that up and he can come over and sort of block traffic so that everybody can make that move at one time. Not, not like kind of snaking over, but everybody at once shifting left or shifting right lane to lane. So you're, you're shifting as a pack uh, and... Uh, and then the tail gunners can can kind of block. It's like a blocking. <laughs> Sometimes it's, you don't it's make actually it. a blocking technique. I mean, like, and, and also yeah. like when we're when we're getting access to uh, when we're making a, a a turn into a busy intersection, uh, what's your technique there as a tail gunner? Well, you can you can ride out and block traffic as a road guard. Uh, you know, there's different theories on that from state to state. Uh, you you some of the law enforcement may not appreciate you doing that, but uh, uh, yeah, you can you can kind of especially if you're pulling out from a, like a hotel parking lot onto a busy street, you know if you got to get six, eight, ten people out, you really have to kind of block that traffic if you're going to do that, or else you're going to have problems. And you know, so you really you really realize uh, uh, by riding in the pack, you learn a lot about what it means to be a Christian brothers. You know the 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 guy the guy in the you know for me when I'm riding uh, up front as the road captain. I basically got my eyes in the mirror more than I have on the road in front of me. I'm always watching out for the guys behind me. But you back there, you really literally have our back. What, yeah. what, what lessons uh, would you say we can learn from riding in a pack like that? Our spiritual uni lessons. Unity. Unity. I mean, that's – and trust. Because when I first started riding with you guys, I've never – you were all new. I, I knew none of you. I knew none of you's capabilities and that sort of thing. And when you're going 70 miles an hour down through traffic and, and situations, I don't know how close I can get to these guys next to me, in front of me, and back of me, and, and what they, you know, what their capabilities are. But as as we settled in and we took our places in the formation uh, and got more comfortable with each other, then we started to tighten the pack up start to have a little more confidence in each other and moving together. It, it's almost like the military, you know, when uh, myself being a Marine, when you go in the military, one of the first things they do is you start to drill. And the reason for the drilling, that's, that's to become one so that every movement you make is in unison. Every step, every turn has to be timed in unison. And it's kind of that way, right in, in the pack, you got to do everything together. It, it, it is. I mean, like I like having Tony Orband as my sidekick. I know he's right there to the right of me. I know what he's going to do. I mean, one of the things is we pulled over once, and one of the riders 
We're pulling off to the side of the road, and one of the riders decided to keep continuing on the far right side of the shoulder and nearly clipped me because he did something unexpected. So it yeah. really knowing what knowing and being able to count on one another. And this is why we talk about forming uh, small packs or man caves, as I like to call them. Men getting together for breakfast once a week or, or coffee or a beer and a pizza someplace once, or, once every week or every other week. Forming this relationship and riding as a pack so that when Grady's in trouble or he needs prayer, I know he can call me, he can text me. Uh, we, can, we, can, we work together as men to challenge, equip, and encourage each other. That's what, uh, that's what God is calling us, each of us men to do uh, for each other. And that's kind of what, what Long Ride Home is about. We're talking with Grady Dyke. He really is the star of Long Ride Home, <laughs> our, re, our motorcycle reality TV show. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be back with mega TV star Grady Dyke. Yeah. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Uh, and my life is so adventurous because I have a radio show. People will talk to me who would normally wouldn't even give me the, the, the light of day. And I get to meet the most interesting people. Uh, but sometimes there's just coincidences where God just says this is going to happen. And that's what happened when Grady Dyke uh, uh, got wind of us riding on season one into the Big Bend country of Texas and wanted to join us. Uh, little did he know that he was going to get swept into swept up into the long ride hold phenomena and uh also going to be riding with us in season two which we've already shot that was riding from Cocoa beach down to key west and then all the way up to new jersey and down the blue ridge parkway down the tail of the dragon and soon to be filmed here uh season three the big island uh the, in, in oahu molokai and the big island so uh so grady do you recall uh season two when you lance took you out to learn how to surf you know, it's funny you say that because just when you were talking about season two, <clears throat> that's what I thought about was was demonstrating my my superior uh, surfing skills there in the uh, fifth. The water, I think that the temp air temp was like fifty five, and the water temp was I think fifty three or something like that that day. Yeah, it was it was cold, but we had to get the <laughs> shot, you know. And it's like, you know, people go, "Oh no, there's a hurricane coming." Well, for me. I mean, I'm not. I'm concerned about people and, and the impact of the hurricane, but I want that hurricane to come, right? So because we need that for our TV show, and I'm trying to remember what happened in season two, what events happened in season two. But season three, on the Big Island, we got the volcano, man. We were over there uh, last week, uh, doing site location stuff. So, uh, so it's going to be pretty uh, sketchy, you know, if it blows anyway. That's good. That'll add that'll add to the show. Yeah, yeah, a little bit of texture when we see Grady Dyke go up about thirty thousand feet. But you were talking about um, about uh, riding as a pack, and you're a member of uh, Catholic Motorcycle Ministries, I am. which is which is really a solid group of riders. Uh, if you're on YouTube, you can see his patch. You know, you can listen to this on five hundred radio, terrestrial radio stations, Sirius FM, uh, and all kinds of blogs. But also now you can watch it on YouTube. You can, you can look at Grady and see how handsome he is. So you can go to yeah. our Bear Wozniak YouTube site and check but it I, out. I don't have Jay's hair. But if I had Jay's hair, I, I would really be a rock star then. Well, tell, talk story about that emblem, that patch you, you, you're wearing. Uh, that, that is the gyro. <clears throat> for for those, one of the most ancient symbols we have, the first two letters of Christ, the Greek, gyro, the alpha and the omega, and the beginning and the end. Uh, CCB and then Cat and Crossbears Motorcycle Ministry, founded in 2008. We have our 10th anniversary coming up this year uh, at Rally. Uh, we're going to celebrate 10 years since the founding of this ministry, and it's growing um, every day. I went, I went to Mobile uh, a few weeks ago to be part of a conference, and uh, we had a lot of people that I never met before. We're really growing. This was the Catholic Motorcycle Ministries Conference? It was not. It was a, a coalition of motorcyclists, a national coalition of motorcyclists annual meeting in Mobile. And we're part of the uh, uh, Christian side of that, the um, um, Christian link to that coalition. <clears throat> and uh, we were part of that 
with with our other Christian biker brothers, and uh, it was it was good. We had a big showing. Uh, we had sixteen. Uh, and we were the largest group at the meeting. No we were kidding. The, largest group, the Catholic Crossbearers, which is predominantly non-Catholic uh, organization, but uh, we've just grown so big. How, how many members are there now? I don't know for sure because um, uh, we're, we're growing so fast. I don't think anybody's even been able to keep up with it. But uh, I, I guess probably I want to say around 150 now. Uh, we've got a few, and even in foreign countries, I think we got one in a couple, one or two in England, uh, Costa Rica, Wales, a few other places. So. So if they, want, if they want to find out more about that, where do they go? Do you have a website for them or Facebook? Yes, we do. CatholicCrossBearersMM.com. CatholicCrossBearersMM.com. Is that – so it's Catholic Crossbearers Motorcycle Ministry, but you're part of the overall uh, coalition of, of motorcycle clubs. Well, it, it, well we're a member We're a member of the, of the National Coalition of Motorcycles, yeah. We have a membership in that organization. Which people may not know, but that's kind of a big deal. To it is. It took us. Uh, it took some work. Our president worked very hard to get us uh, into that organization. And I think the Lord did too, because as I recall, when he first started his ministry, the man who kind of had, I guess you would say, jurisdiction over that geographical area, the motorcycle club that he was in, was his cellmate, and helped open yeah. the door for, for the launching of the ministry. Um, you know, yeah. I was I was at uh, I was uh, uh, I was at uh, this place called Nico's Restaurant here, which everyone in Hawaii knows about. Nico's not a tourist place, great grinds, as we say. And I saw a member of the Sons of Hawaii there. Yeah. And so I walked up to him and I go, I said, you know, I used to ride with the Sons of Molokai, and he goes, brother, once a member of the Sons, you're always a member of the Sons. That's what I was going to say. That's your brother always. Yeah, and uh, but I I'd ridden mostly with the Molokai pack. Uh, I mean, I should say. A chapter and uh and but there's but when i was living in oahu there was less than 10 maybe less than five active members of the sons but now there's 30 members here wow. and so i got to go down and meet them uh uh the, that weekend they were doing a ride so cindy and i went over and they were just it was just love everywhere you know just so great to be part of that that group and i guess uh they're gonna maybe let us we'll do it maybe get to shoot a segment with them while we're here on oahu so cool. uh yeah really really uh Cool to have that brotherhood. Let's go back to that again, though. Uh, the concept of brotherhood, uh, standing together. What what can what can riding being a member of of the Catholic Motorcycles Ministries or or uh, riding in a pack teach men about what we can do, what we need to do for each other? Somehow in our history as men, we got this idea, this macho idea, this false macho idea. That we're, we can do it alone. That we we're, we're independent machines, and it's just not true. And you know, I uh, I know a lot of combat veterans who who th they form a bond that's something we don't we can't even understand. You know, they put their 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 self their their in their lives in the hand of that that brother in, in combat, and uh, and that is a bond that. They never, free. you know, even you talk to these old guys and, and they may even be suffering from Alzheimer's. They can't even remember, you know, what they did yesterday, but they don't forget those brothers that they were in combat with. Uh, they formed that relationship. And and I think we as Christians, uh, we need to form those kind of relationships uh, going deeper than just, uh, you know, talking about sports or whatever. We need to go deep into our hearts, deep into our lives, and open up to each other and support each other. Because, you know, you see people that, that seem to be okay on the surface, and then you find out they committed suicide. That means they're not – something's missing there. They need – somebody should have been – I have I have friends that did that, and I, and I wonder, why couldn't he just pick up the phone and call me, and, and we could talk, and, you know, we could help each other? You know, I, I would understand, but – that's what we need to do. We need to go deeper. You know, you, you know your, your ministry talks about deeper, deep adventure, and, and we need to go deeper in our relationship well, as men, men. Well, you know, men always want to be productive. I got to get this done. I got this deck I got to work on. I got to get my lawnmower fixed. I got to get ready for work on Monday. And I'm learning that uh, Sunday afternoons is a good time to call friends. They yeah. actually need to 
realize that's your most productive thing you can do is to build a relationship and to reach out to friends and really find out what's really going. I'm like you, like you, you and Lance Mackey have become really good friends. We have one of our, one of our cast members. And you're not, it's more than that. You really talk deep about what's going on in each other's lives. And we do, we talk regularly. Yeah. And you talk about, well, why didn't that person just call me? Well, maybe we should be calling them. You know, it's like there's people we need there in everybody's life. There's a, maybe one or two or three, or maybe there's a dozen uh, or maybe even more friends, but we need to cultivate men need to cultivate friendship. Men are basically isolated and lonely. And they don't want to admit where they're failing or where they're scared or where they're uh, challenged, you know. And we need to reach out and open up to each other. We're afraid to be vulnerable. We really are. We need to get over that. God you know, wasn't I on, yeah. It was on your show that I opened up and talked about uh, what I had been through myself, some of my personal experiences. And I did that in front of, you know, a, a camera. And that was difficult. Some things my family, my own children didn't know about me. But I did that because I wanted men to know that it's okay. It's okay to talk about your weaknesses and your problems and the things, the areas that need need to be opened up and healed by Christ. You know, uh, Jesus made himself vulnerable, didn't he? Was that? Jesus made himself vulnerable. Oh, absolutely. He couldn't be more vulnerable than <laughs> just the gospel yesterday talked about that. You know, his family said he's crazy. He's possessed. What's wrong with this guy? He was he was out there, uh, you know, he couldn't even get to get a meal because people were all around him. He was just, he opened himself up to the world. To, and, 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 and ultimately on the cross. We're talking, with Gray, we're, we're talking with Grady Dyke. When we get back, we're going to get a little bit more deeper into his, his personal uh, a journey with the Lord. This is the Bear Wozniak adventure. We want to wish all you fathers happy Father's Day. I don't think as a father on a Father's Day we should be looking for what kind of presents we're going to get or recognition we're going to get. I think you should take Father's Day and say, what am I going to give to my family this day? What am I going to do special for every one of my children, uh, for my spouse? Think of Father's Day as your as what uh, our Father in Heaven did in giving His Son. And give your very best to your children on Father's Day. This is Bear Wozniak. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak adventure. We want to encourage you guys to go to our website, deepadventure.com. You can order uh, the 10 DVD set, DVD set of Long Ride Home, and we got uh, the Bears Man Cave cigars, the seven cigar samplers that are uh, the seven virtue cigars. That, by the way, uh, the Napa Institute is going to have us provide the cigars for them for this year's uh, cigar nights. When you go to the Napa Institute; uh, it's incredible experience. If you haven't signed up to go, you should go. Uh, just I think you just Google Napa Institute. It's going to be in Napa, I think, July 11th to the 15th. You meet great people there who are totally devoted to you and to each other and to furthering the cause of Christ. And so there's a lot of opportunity. There's like wine tastings at five and cigars and, and whiskey at nine because they want and, and you know long elongated breakfasts and lots of places to sit and talk because they want people to cultivate relationships. But we get to uh, we get to provide the uh, our seven virtue cigars for the night cigar nights, which are every night, and we also get to show. Uh, one of our episodes of Long Ride Home. So that's going to be really cool. So uh, we have a member, a cast member of our TV show, uh, Long Ride Home with us right now, Grady Dyke. Aloha, Grady. Hello. Hey, Grady. Uh, oh, you got to learn how to say aloha. Let's hear you say aloha. Aloha. Okay, and, and what does howly mean? Do you remember? Howly means uh, without breath. And and uh, how, that's right. And and who, how, do, how did... Uh, People like you and me from the mainland get that name. Because Captain Cook, you taught me this. Captain Cook came to Hawaii and he shook hands instead of touching foreheads and breathing and and so, face to face. And so, so he had no word, breath. And, yeah, and ha means breath. So aloha means to give breath. All right. So it really means to give love. And so uh, so we got a special role for our buddy Lance, huh? Did he tell you about what, he's, what we're up to with he, him? He did. He told me. I don't want to spill the beans here because people will be looking for season three eventually. 
Yeah, I know. Season three will be a whole year at least before it comes out. But yeah, he's <laughs> gonna be he's gonna be dressed up in the matching Aloha shirt, in Aloha shorts, wearing black socks uh, with flip flops, and uh, you know, <laughs> so he's gonna be howly to the max. He's gonna wonder why but, we call him. He's gonna wonder why we keep calling him Max. But he dresses that way all the time. How are we uh, gonna know? <laughs> don't let that secret out. <laughs> I want to talk. I want to go back to Father's Day while you talk because yeah. you know my wife and I raised nine children, and I think one of the things you talked about about getting not worrying about getting presents, the gift of being a father. I think we need to thank God because what He's done is He's shared His fatherhood with us. He let us be. He let us be a part of of father of being father. And I've learned that over the years, you know, with my children, that this, the disappointments, you, the, the, the good times, the bad times, and I've learned more what it must be like to be God who loves us infinitely, and he sees us going on the wrong path sometimes, and, and it breaks his heart, but he stays with us, you know, he doesn't abandon us, and, and that's a gift uh, of fatherhood. Um, and you know, I lost, you know, I lost my son. We've talked about that on previous shows and you could, t you could talk about that though, Grady. It, and you know, I can't in the background here, there's a picture. That's a picture of my son on the wall. But anyway, um, you know, when I lost him, I thought the father lost his son on the cross and he shared, I've shared, I'm sharing in that loss. He let me know what it was like to lose his son in some small way, in my, in my you know, earthly limited way. But uh, and and the good times and the bad, he, he, it's all fatherhood and it's all good. It's all a gift. You know, Grady, it's like I was talking with Mike Aquilina last week about the concept of this of a sacrifice. And, you know, when we when we celebrate mass, we offer Jesus, we join ourselves with Jesus and offer ourselves to the father as a sacrifice to the father. But it was the father who sacrificed, who gave his son. We forget that he he first gave us his son and then we, uh, you know, we we then give him back. So it's like, you know, um, Abraham with Isaac. Yeah. We, we forget about the feeling, the emotion. I, I don't know how to say it because he's God, but the love that was outpoured by God, the father, when he saw his son on the cross, you know, it, it was a gift of the father you know the protestants have it all wrong they they believe that martin luther believes in something called penal substitution which is that god sent jesus for one reason and that was to die on the cross as a substitute uh for our sin that he was punished for our sin by angry and ju just god uh, nothing could be further than the truth jesus came to be in solidarity with us in and to join us in uh, this infinite god with our humanity being all God and all man. And uh, it was an act of total love, not of judgment, but of love by the Father to give his Son. And total love by the Son to bring us uh, to the Father and to raise our dignity in what we uh, refer to as recapitulation, uh, where Absolutely. Jesus came to fulfill all righteousness. Yeah, talk to us about that. Absolutely. Share the oh, gospel with us, Grady. Lay it I, wanted us. To go, I wanted to go back when you were talking about this, the loss of, of his Son. And especially for those people out there who may have lost a child, uh, I always think about, you may know this story, but Fulton Sheen was speaking at St. Patrick's in New York, preaching once, I think it was during a Lenten season, he was speaking on the love of God. And a woman came up and stood right in front of the pulpit while he was preaching and looked up at him and said, where was your God when my son died? And Fulton Sheen was so wonderful. Without skipping a beat, he looked down at the woman and he said, the same place he was when his son died. And it just gave me chills. I was like, whoa. Amen. Grady, tell us the gospel. The gospel. God so loved the world, gave his only son. That, that's, the, that's the God. You know, I go and I talk to, uh, to youth in juvenile center. I do a Bible study, and it's one of the things, when always we get to the gospel reading, I say, what is gospel? And you know what gospel means? And, of course, they fumble around, and I say, it's good news. Gospel means good news. And I say, okay, if the gospel is good news, what is the good news? And then they kind of fumble around some more, and sometimes they get it, sometimes they don't. And I, I have this crucifix here on my vest, 
and I say, this is the good news. God loves you this much. God loves you this much. That's the gospel. God became a human being, died on the cross for us to demonstrate his love. He opened those arms on the cross wide open to demonstrate, to say, I love you. That's why the crucifix is so wonderful. We as Catholics have that great gift, you know, every home, every every Catholic building, every room should have it, have that crucifix uh, in it because it says, I love you. It's, it's, it's huge. You, it, it can't, love cannot be demonstrated any more than that for a God, our God to come down, take on a human nature and give himself fully without reserve, held nothing back. Uh, no one loves us that way. No one can love that big. But him. Grady, Grady, there are people that have dug themselves in a hole so deep. Uh, the ter depravity of pornography or uh, an affair or just uh, being selfish and uh, self-centered and focused on money or power or fame. Um, there are people that they feel they've dug themselves su such a deep hole uh, that they can't get out of. What do you say to them? What, what, here's what I say. If you're Catholic, if you're baptized Catholic, I say this. You're one confession away from coming back. One confession. You go into that confessional and you dump it and you start anew. And that prodigal son, that father's waiting. He's looking for that prodigal son to come back. And you're back. It's, it's that simple. It's, it's, it's not complicated. If you're Catholic, you find a church, you go to confession, you dump the load, you get it over, you start anew, you're brand new like a little baby again, you start over and you and you pick up and you keep going. Uh, if you're non-Catholic, you get down on your knees and you say, I'm a mess. I, I'm out of control. I need your help. I can't do this alone. That's the first step. You know, if you do the 12 steps for the, for the you know, alcohol and drug rehabilitation, uh, programs. The first step is I can't do this alone. And that's where we as men, we think I'm tough. You know, I can tough this out. Yeah, that's a part of being a man. But when you're talking about being steep, deep into sin and all the things of this world that are, that are killing us as men, you get down on your knees and you say to God, I need your help and he will help you. You know, I'm reading, the, I'm reading the life story right now of a murderer. Um, I've spent, uh, I've read 13 or 1400 pages of, the, of, of his life, his history, of a murderer. Um, his name is St. Paul. Yeah. And every morning I pray the prayers of a murderer written by King David. You know, yeah. I'm reading, I found, I, I'm gonna interrupt you because I, I found a book recently uh, called A Different Kind of Cell. And it's about a Marine who killed his sergeant. He ended up killing two or three other people. We'll and get, he went, when we come back, we'll, we'll get into that, Grady. We've got to take a hard break. This is Bear Wazen, but what we're saying is that you can't have done anything. Uh, if St. Paul, who was a murderer, and King David, who was a murderer, are, um, have received God's love, grace, and forgiveness, there's nothing you can do that's beyond uh, the reach of God's mercy. We'll get right back and uh, listen to this cliffhanger that uh, Grady was introducing to us. This is the Bear Wozniak adventure with Grady Dyke, the major star of Long Ride Home reality <laughs> TV show. Yeah. Aloha, everybody. This is Bear Wozniak with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. i got to tell you, uh, last weekend we had big surf here in Hawaii and again uh, two weekends ago and then just this last weekend. And there's a couple waves I just won't forget. Uh, just beautiful, rich, full, hollow waves uh, paddling way outside. Um, uh, there's a place called Canoes and uh, where everyone kind of congregates. And then way outside there's Canoes, there's a place called First Point. And I went out there to first point with three or four. There was maybe 100 people on the inside and three or four of us out beyond that at first point. And guess what? Um, I got to drop in on one of the biggest waves of the day. Um, 
that's what we challenge us to at Deep Adventure is to go out beyond uh, the the norm, uh, the, 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 the mediocrity that the world is calling you to. Uh, turn your back on the Aina, that's the land, the safety of shore, and paddle out in the deep, the deep adventure that God has for you. Uh, go out into the deep where, uh, where I was. And when this big wave came, I could, see it sha- I could see it coming out of the deep blue about three minutes before it got to me. And I paddled out further and further. And then I had to paddle, turn and paddle with all my might against the offshore trade winds, drop in late, and had one of the greatest rides of my life just, just flying by. And I'll tell you this. A lot of people saw me riding that wave, especially the people who had been staying on the inside. You know, they were only about an eighth of a mile out. I was probably closer, well over a third of a mile out. They saw me drop in on this wave, but you know what? They didn't see me. They saw a surfer. They saw my board carving a beautiful line along the face of that wave. What they saw was the wave and someone riding it. That's what we're saying in, in, the, in Deep Adventure Ministries. The most radical thing you can do in life is abandon yourself to the wildness of the adventure of God's will. And if you abandon yourself to God's will, you know what's really cool? You disappear. And people no longer see you, they see Jesus. When I dropped in on that wave, people were mesmerized by the wave, not the fact that I was riding it. But my riding it, be- it allowed that the perfection and the beauty and that power of the wave to be seen. That's what we want to be as Christians. We want to be, uh, we want to be away from the pack. I mean, we want to be with our people, our, our Christian brothers and sisters. But that the, the world is adrift. And, says we, and that's another thing. The whole pack had been adrift. The waves were so big that the currents were pushing them sideways along the beach, and they didn't even know it. And I, and I paddled to, stay, to keep my position, to hold my position. And I dropped in on that wave because I held my ground, too. The scripture verse I read uh, Sunday morning from Ephesus, Ephesians 6.14, stand your ground, stand your ground. Stand, you know, paddle out, go into the deep, abandon yourself to the deep ocean of God's love and will, and then paddle in with all your might. And, uh, and then the other thing is, uh, hold your position in the lineup. There's nothing more worse than you see a poser out there who looks like he knows how to surf and he's just drifting along uh, past everybody. Hold your position, paddle out, turn your back on all the agendas of your life, hold your position in the lineup, stand your ground in prayer and in, in, uh, and in, and in a concrete virtue, and then paddle in with all your might to God's will. I could tell Grady Dyke, member of Longcast Home, is just like wants to say something. Go on, Grady. What are your well, thoughts? We were we were we left off talking about uh, the the book I was telling you, a different kind of cell. We were, you were, you brought up the subject about uh, being forgiven, and there's nothing we can't we we can do that God can't forgive. And uh, sometimes people feel that. I know a lot of men feel that way. They feel like I've done these things. God can never love me. I can never be a holy person because I've done. And you talked about Saint Paul and David being murdered. And, and Eric Wardrum, you know, that's what the priest told him in prison. He said, Eric thought he could never come back to the church. And the priest, the ch- prison chaplain told, you know, Moses was a murderer. David was a murderer. Paul was a murderer. Yeah, you can come back. And and, and I found a book recently, uh, a different kind of cell. It's about a Marine who kills his Marine sergeant. And he goes to Leavenworth. And while he's, he ends up killing two more inmates, and then he kills a prison guard. And, and at that time in the federal prison system, there was no death penalty. So they didn't know what to do with this guy. He was just out of control. So they create, they spent $40,000 and created a cell for him never to come out of. And guards were told, do not talk to him. He's going to be completely isolated for the rest. And he was young. He was in his early 20s. And he was to be completely isolated from the rest of the world. And eventually, over a period of time, uh, a priest came to minister to him and was able, they allowed the, the priest to talk to him. And I, I, the book's great, you have to read it, but at the end of the day, he becomes an oblite of the Trappist, Trappist community in prison. He becomes a monk in prison, uh, has a complete conversion. And nobody in the world is believing that this guy's for real. They think he's just trying to, to get out of jail by, by putting on this Christian image but he has this really deep conversion, and, and this priest walks it with him, and, and, uh, and it demonstrates that nobody is beyond God's mercy. 
that's that's the message and that's the message i want to convey right now to anybody who's watching this wherever you're at you're not beyond god's mercy you know sister faustina tells us what our lord to told told her <coughs> told her that uh, his mercy is endless and the only obstacle is the obstacle you place in your heart from receiving that mercy there's no there's no limit on his end he's wide open he's ready to forgive and 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 you can start anew like i say if you're catholic one confession away you're one confession away from being brand new like a baby starting all over again and of course if you're not catholic go to a priest um sure and to pray uh, you, know, you know god is all powerful he's all merciful god is love but you are extremely powerful too because you can stop god's love you can resist god's love he's given you that freedom that's the vulnerability he's given himself you can be as powerful as God. You can stop God's love from entering your heart. Or you can open your heart up. And believe me, God is real. When you open up your heart, you know that you know that you know that you know. <laughs> it's not a contrived feeling. It isn't white-knuckling it and trying to get your faith worked up and positive mental attitude, you know, faith in faith or something like that. It's just when you say, Jesus, forgive me, um, as Augustine said, and let me give all I am to you and be the king of my and ruler and lord of my life. Something changes. A new, he gives you a new and right desires. He takes out the heart of flesh from the stone from your body and gives you a soft heart of flesh. Talk about that, Grady. We got five minutes. I want, uh, four minutes. I want you to just bring this horse into the barn. I want, I want people right now to give their lives to Jesus. Pull over to the side of the road and, Grady, share with them and then uh, lead them in a, in a prayer. Well, sometimes you have to reach the bottom. There's a there's a Baptist minister in Tennessee, uh, and I'm trying to remember his name. It's um, uh, David Sturgeon, I think. He was the second in charge for a, uh, I won't mention which one, but a but a major uh, one percenter motorcycle club who went through some crazy things. He wrote a book called Biking and the Brotherhood, and he went through it all and he ended up in prison and on a cold cement prison floor he opened a, a, a bible that a prison chaplain gave him and started reading it and broke down in tears broke down in tears and he was looking at 30 years at least in prison and he just said jesus help me forgive me god forgive me i've made a mess of my life and everything changed and instead of 30 years in prison, he was paroled, uh, and eventually he became a, a minister. And uh, so it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you've done. All it takes is get down on your knees and say you're sorry and say, God, I'm sorry I messed it up, and I need you. I need you to come into my life. Uh, we're in trouble. I mean, it doesn't take much to look around in our world today and see we're in trouble. And the answer is Christ. The answer, Christ teaches us who we are. Christ shows us who we are. You know, he says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And he reaches his hand out. I tell the kids in the juvenile center, God reaches his hand out to you. You can take his hand or you can push his hand away, and, and he won't force you. But his hand stays out. It's there whenever you want it. And and there are people out there who are on the edge. You know, we, we, we see every day people committing suicide, reach out, reach out wherever you are, put your hand up and say, here, I'll take your hand. You know, the thing is, is we do, we do, whether we go to heaven or hell, it's 100% under our, it's 100% under our control. But you men out there that are tough and gritty and have messed up, join the crowd, dude. We're all there. We're all, we're all misfits, you know, and we, <laughs> we need you to join our, to join our army to become a Christian, to become a Catholic, join with us. Uh, do an about face. That's you're the guy we want. We're you're the guy we want. We don't need Ned Flanders, you know, Homer Simpson's neighbor. We need tough guys who have made some big mistakes, made some, done some you know, messed up things like we all have, and, and join with us. Join join the army. Join the crusade, and and help us, as Ephesians six says, stand your ground. Step into the breach and stand for the beauty and justice and, and truth and unconditional love of God and fight back uh, the, the moral iniquity 
uh, by a life of laying down your life in service. This is Bear Wozniak. We've been talking with Grady Dyke from the uh, cast member of Long Ride Home. Grady, I'll see you in Hawaii in a couple months, a few months. I'll be ready. We're going to be shooting season three. All right. You know what Jimmy Buffett said? I don't know where I'm going to go when the volcano blows, so who knows? <laughs> okay, we'll be, we'll be back next week with another Bear Wozniak adventure. Uh, until then, Viva Cristo Rey! Viva Cristo Rey! Aloha.